what is going on you guys and welcome back to another episode of natural hair and true crime if this is your first time and you are new welcome to the channel my name is Jataya. here on my channel i give you guys natural hair content i do wig reviews and, and i also discuss true crime cases all while doing my natural hair if you are interested in any of those i just listed then i highly recommend that you hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell that way you don't have to worry about missing another upload now y'all i'm gonna be honest I'm still working with my old phone. I know, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a new phone, y'all, or a camera one. I, I promise y'all. So, but I did buy a flash drive so I could store more storage. So we're gonna see what that's talking about. But yeah, like I said, it's another episode of Natural Hair in True Crime slash Halloween edition. Now, y'all, um, I was supposed to record this video like three days ago. I ain't gonna lie, work been kicking my ass and I've been lazy. So I'm off tomorrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to record this tonight. And that way I can go ahead and do all my editing tomorrow. And hopefully it can be up by at least Thursday or Friday. So yeah, when you'll be seeing this, it'll be either Thursday or Friday. That's what I'm going for. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get right into it. So as you know, by the title of this video, we're gonna be talking about the Stephen Damon case. Y'all, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I should have researched how to pronounce the last name. Jesus, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? All right, you guys. So on this episode of Natural and True Crime, I will be basically, y'all, I'm going to just be putting a pre poo on my hair because it's time for me to wash this, as you can see. And yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a pre poo The product that I will be using is the Just For Me Curl Piece tender head pre-shampoo detangler y'all this is my very first time trying this so i don't know how this is gonna do on my hair but i have seen a lot of people compare this and kind of do a versus with the um what is it the i can't even think of the name of it the crema nature's pre-shampoo yeah because I, it has the same thing and it has aloe aloe vera marshmallow extract and y'all i love the cream of nature's pre-shampoo so i'm pretty sure i'm gonna like this one too so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and get straight into it this is what it looks like oh shit y'all <laughs> this just spilled all on me all right, so today's true crime case takes place in the location of East Meadow, New York in 1955. And this is Jerry and Marilyn Damon. Y'all, <laughs> I don't know why I cannot pronounce this name. It's Damon, yeah, Damon, yeah. Anyway, so this is Jerry and Marilyn Damon. Now, Jerry and Marilyn had two kids together. They had a boy by the name of Steven, also known as Stevie. And they had a daughter by the name of Pamela. Now, originally, the Damon family lived in Iowa, but they soon had to move to New York due to Jerry having to be moved because he was in the Air Force. Now, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and go into what happened on October 31st of 1955. And then I'm going to like kind of backtrack and explain a little bit about like the relationship between Jerry and Marilyn. That way it can kind of make sense. All right. So going right into it. So it's a regular day. Like I said, it's Halloween of 1955. So Marilyn takes two and a half year old Stevie and seven month old Pamela to go to the market. So she goes to this food market called Food Fair Market. Now, before she goes in, she basically parks the carriage with set Pamela in it, and she parks it right in front of like the store before she goes in. Now, from what I read, y'all, it said that she told Stevie, who mind you, which is only two and a half, what, almost three years old, she tells him to watch after her sister while she basically goes in. And Marilyn was only going in to guess get a loaf of bread and it ended up taking her 10 minutes. So she leaves her kids in front of the market and she goes in and purchases this bread. So it took about 10 minutes. When she comes out, her kids are nowhere in sight. Yeah, no. I don't want to be the person to be like, should have seen this coming, but. <sighs> so she walks out and she noticed that her kids aren't, aren't there. Obviously they're gone missing. So her first thing that she, she thinks that, okay, maybe Stevie 
pushed the sister back and pushed her back towards the house. Now, I don't know because it doesn't say like how far um, they stay from the house or from the market. So I don't know how long it would have been or how, how much. But anyway, so she went to the house and she noticed that Stevie wasn't there. And actually, it ended up a family friend ended up finding the carriage with seven month old Pamela in it, so about a few blocks away from the market. So when they found Pamela, they looked and Stevie was nowhere to be found. So Marilyn ended up calling the police and it wasn't long before they ended up having a search party. And actually 5,000 people ended up joining the search to help look for Stevie. <sighs> yeah, this, uh, it's just, I just, I don't know, it's just great. Like, I'm still like, how do you leave a two? Like, why? Okay. Sorry, y'all. 5,000 people, and I think it actually says that some of, like, people from the military ended up helping on the search. Now, while the search is going on, police begin to come up with their own theory of what possibly could have happened to Stephen. So, police actually thought Stephen could have possibly been taken by a mother who might have lost her child in the past and basically wanted to kidnap Stevie to kind of replace for that child that she lost so when i read this part i was thinking honestly at first it sounds crazy but then I, it, it really it makes sense it makes a whole lot of sense so i can understand why the police might have thought that thought that and it probably happened before so that's why they automatically went to that conclusion but honestly i i, I give an a for effort because i mean that's a pretty that's a pretty good theory i mean that could be a possibility, but but then when I think about it, like okay, so he just they just took Stephen and not Pamela. So yeah, so the search went on for, until six thirty of November first of nineteen fifty five, and then police went ahead and called off the search, and they ended up changing Stephen's disappearance to a kidnappings. So even though police called off the search, people were still basically talking about it and kind of like on the side helping out as much as they could with finding Steven. Now, finally, a month later, going into the disappearance of Steven, a college student actually sends a note, well, a ransom note to the Damons, basically requesting $3,000 in exchange for Steven. So now the first... No, like I said, they asked for 3000 So this person ended up sending two more letters, basically requesting money. And each time they would up the price. So th by the second letter, they were asking for $10,000. And by the third letter, they were asking for 14000 Now, Jerry, when he saw these, he immediately knew that like, okay, somebody's trying to scam. Like they probably don't even have my son. So he ended up just giving the letters to police and having them and letting them do their thing with it. And actually they would end up getting like a few more letters like these or like ransoms of people basically asking for money in exchange for Steven. And y'all, when I read this, it's really crazy to me that people would sit up there and try to take advantage of somebody when they're down and when they're desperate. I mean, you need money that bad that you would go this route and say that you have this child. You don't have this child, but you you want money like. Like what? Yeah. I don't know. Now, while this is going on, the Damons were actually making public pleas to the public. <laughs> public pleas to the public. Really? But yeah, they were making public pleas to basically who, anybody who has Stephen to please make sure to keep him safe and to please make sure that you were giving him his medicine and his vitamins because apparently, unfortunately, Stephen did have anema. Months have went by and there was still no sign of Stephen and the family actually ended up moving back to Iowa. Now, following this move back to Iowa in 1957, Jerry and Marilyn ended up getting a divorce. Now, it was said in reports that Jerry divorced Marilyn because 
she believed that she had something to do with the disappearance of Stephen, but then that, that wasn't the reason, and the reason was actually because of their other stuff that was going on between them, but especially because Marilyn was said to be tempered. After they divorced, Marilyn actually ended up getting custody of Pamela, and yeah, that's pretty much where it ends between Jerry and Marilyn. Now, while they were married, it did say that, well, it... From what I read, you guys, it made it seem like uh, Marilyn was more, I'm not going to say abusive, but I guess more aggressive. And it, it just kind of spiraled down after the disappearance of Steven. Now, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to like just accuse anybody of anything. But, you know, it's a lot of speculations online of they believing Marilyn had something to do with Steven's disappearance. But yeah, I'll get to that more later. Now, during the same year that Marilyn and Jerry got divorced, which is in 1957, a body of a little boy was found in Philadelphia. Now, yeah, to this day, nobody knows who that little boy was or the identity of that child. And I don't know if y'all have heard of this case or not. This is actually another very important and famous cold case it's called the boy in the box now this is basically like this little boy whose body was found and nobody knows who it was they haven't been able to identify him and the child is actually buried y'all in some location don't quote me but i did forget it you can look it up now during this time there was a lot of theories and a lot of speculation going around that this possibly could have been stephen Dam damon philadelphia is less than three hours from east meadow new york so i don't know that could have been a possibility but anyway so the boy who was found the boy in the box it had it was it had the same age height and weight of Stephen Damon so that's probably why a lot of people kind of assume that this might be him now y'all I'm not gonna lie like I say you can do your research on the boy in the box when I did it does show like pictures of you know a deceased child and when I looked at the pictures and I kind of like did a side-by-side -side of Stephen Damon it um, it did look like it could have possibly been him. But actually in 2003, a DNA test was performed and it did come back not matched. So it was not Steven. Unfortunately, that, I mean, it's good at the same time, but it, it um, still, like it's sad as far as this boy still goes un unidentified to this day. Nobody knows who, who he was. And that's kind of sad as far as that issue. But yeah, so this, the boy in the box was not Stephen Damon. So years eventually go by and unfortunately there still is no sign. Oh, that scared the fuck out of me. And unfortunately there still is no sign of Stephen Damon. Now there has been some people who have claimed to see people that possibly or see a guy who that possibly can look like Stephen Damon, but y'all it's 2021 and now, I mean, that was in 1955. So he's what, 60 some, definitely like 68. So it's just hard, especially like once it gets, you know, past those like first few years from the disappearance. But, I mean, cause you don't know how a person is gonna, I mean, you can imagine as much as you can, but you still don't know how a person is gonna look like I say. So unfortunately they still have not found him, but there was, a glimpse of hope that actually happened in around 2009. In fact, there was a guy by the name of John Barnes who actually thought he could have been Stephen Damon. John was born August 18th of 1955. Now, majority of his life is said that John was, he felt kind of like an outcast in his own family. He also believed he didn't look like any of his his brothers and sisters and his relatives. Now I said that his relatives would claim that he would look like other family members, but he was never able to see a picture of him and they would never show him a picture of him, of them. So 
kind of had John thinking like, hmm, that is odd. And then unfortunately, when once his mom passed away on her death deathbed, she confessed something to John that he hasn't told anyone. So we don't know what he, she said to him to basically make him feel like, okay, she's, you know, this isn't my real family. But yeah, so she confessed something to John on her deathbed, which this immediately made John just believe that she was not his biological mother and his, his dad wasn't his biological father. And so that made John begin the search to find his real family. So in 2009, John began his journey of basically trying to find his family. So he began to look at different archives of missing children. And that's when he came across the Stephen Damon case. And when John saw Stephen Damon, he was like, I actually, I kind of favor him. I, I look like him and I actually favor his family too. So then he began to do a little bit more research and kind of notice where it was like a lot of simul similarities. And soon John was convinced that he was Stephen Damon. So he actually got in contact with Pamela and wanted to actually do a DNA test. And he actually got in contact with the police, Iowa police, I want to say, to basically kind of like come forward to be like, hey, I think I'm the missing person. I think I believe I'm the Stephen Damon. So Pamela ended up agreeing to take the DNA test to see if John was Stephen and if that was her brother. And actually in around around June of 2009, the belief that John was actually Steve Stephen became public and it kind of gained a lot of attention and people were kind of like waiting to see if this really was Stephen. The Damon family actually thought that John looked like them and favored them. And honestly, if you look at the pictures and see for yourself, he does, I'm not gonna lie, he does favor them. And they were really hoping that this search was gonna come to an end and they had actually found Stephen. But unfortunately on June 18th of 2009, the test results came back and it was confirmed that John was not Stephen. Y'all, I, I ain't gonna lie, I really kind of wanted, when I read this part, I was like, dang, I was hoping like, it was him too, in a sense. I don't know, but yeah, I can I can definitely understand and see why John may have thought that, I mean, he was Stephen. For instance, when comparing some physical features of John and Stephen, it was said that John has a mole on his right calf and actually Stephen had a birthmark in that exact same spot, but it wasn't a mole. So yeah, I can understand that. And then y'all, it doesn't say this, but when I was doing my research, like, um, by the way, I didn't uh, mention that if that John, he lives in Michigan. And when I was doing my research, it said that Stephen was born in Michigan. So, uh, yeah, like, I mean, that is kind of a coincidence that, I mean, you live in the place that this missing child was born, you know, it, it, I mean, it just, I can understand it. But yeah, so John wasn't Steven and unfortunately it doesn't really kind of explain like if he kind of, you know, understood or figured out if he was his parents biologically or not, but yeah. Okay, y'all, so I'm gonna go ahead and get right into these possible theories and basically my thoughts on like what may have happened to Steven. But y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and, and just mention this from jump, like, cause I'm, I mean, y'all probably already thinking what I'm thinking. Why would you sit up there and leave your two year old and seven month old, well, no, almost three, but like that freaking matters, and seven month old, on the side of a store, outside of the store by themselves, like, that just seems crazy to me. You're sitting like, why would you do that? And I know back then, apparently in, I guess that location, during that time, it was, you know, kidnapping and, you know, just trafficking and everything else. It wasn't really that big of a deal. And apparently it was quite common for a lot of women to leave their children outside of the store while they go shop. Still, I, I mm -mm. like, no, like, I, I can understand it a little bit, but even then, like, 
it's just that today's time, I'm thinking in today's time, that's a no-go. But even then, I wouldn't, mm, I, I wouldn't have did it. Like, I'm just thinking, like, I can understand, I can see why. Because, you know, you don't feel like having to deal with children when you're trying to go shop. And I, I guess, I mean, I just can't believe it was an actual thing to, it was common like that. I felt like that was very crazy. I just... I don't want to do that. On the site I read where she supposedly told Stephen to watch Pamela, which, which is the seven the seven month old, as if how can he watch a baby and he what? So this is one of the theories. There's obviously you know you hate to think, but I mean it only makes sense in this case because it's just like so you leave you leaving your child on the porch and he's what almost three two and a half almost three years old obviously one a, a good possibility that he wandered off and god knows what could have happened now that theory i feel like i'm not gonna say it's debunked but it it doesn't make sense because i mean even the if something tragically happened where's the body like there was nobody ever discovered or ever found now another theory y'all and it's probably like probably one of the most biggest theories a lot of people think that Marilyn had something to do with the disappearance and actually really in researching this it seems like the husband did too as I was digging deeper into research I ended up coming across a video that apparently of this lady who used to live next to the Damons and she would say that Stephen would cry a lot. And she would um, say how she felt like Marilyn would basically abuse Stephen. And like anytime he would, I guess, go to the bathroom on himself, he, she would make him like clean it up. Yeah, and I'm just like, okay, this, I mean, I don't, I hope this is not true. But I mean, yeah, it's a whole video on it, actually. If you're interested in the video, I can link it below. But yeah, I mean, I didn't watch all of it. Yeah, the lady actually goes to claim that she went to the house after the disappearance of Steven and she smelled a funny smell. I don't know if she was like trying to incline that it possibly could have been like a dead body. And she was saying how it possibly, it was buried somewhere. Y'all, like I said, I didn't watch the whole video, but... If that is something you if you want to watch it for yourself i definitely make sure to link it down below but yeah and then just the relationship that marilyn and jerry had um just from reading it wasn't a good relationship it seemed like marilyn was i'm not gonna say not controlling but just aggressive and like tempered so yeah i don't mm, i feel like if that were true, we could ask Pamela because, I mean, Marilyn did have custody of Pamela so she could explain how, you know, her life was living with Marilyn and how she was as a mom. But, yeah, that was a, one of three. But, y'all, yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm just going back to why would you leave your two, your three-year-old and your seven-month-old outside while you go shopping? Like, that's, I don't know. I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm a little bit flabbergasted, okay? Like, I'm I'm not understanding that part. Like a three year old who's he wasn't strapped down, cause I mean I can understand the seven month old a little bit because they can't go anywhere. But still, I, that's a no go for me. But you like a three year old who can get into basically everything and anything. You just tell them you just leave them, and you're gone uh, ten minutes. Imagine what could happen in ten minutes. Like, I don't like it. So another one of the theories of the disappearance of Stephen is, like I mentioned before, the police thought it possibly could have been a kidnapping by a mother who lost her child. And like I say, I can understand it. I can see it. But even then, like I just, like when I thought more into it, like, I mean, he could have, what if he just, like, why didn't, why wouldn't you take both children then, you know? And y'all, and then, you know, my, my crazy head, how I get to thinking, like, what if, you know, it said she was, uh, you know, aggressive. What if she told him to stay there and she got upset that he didn't stay there? So 
she possibly found I don't know like she found Steven before Pamela and she may have did something to Steven and that's why somebody else ended up finding Pamela before she did because she had found Steven was too busy dealing with him I don't know I don't want to make assumptions like that but, I, but I'm just like trying to think of any avenue because I'm just like there's no way he could have pushed a carriage back home because I mean they say the carriage was found 300 feet which was the blocks I'm just thinking like a a two-year-old well almost three-year-old they're not gonna be thinking about pushing this all the way home matter of fact how would they even know like their mind know the exact way to get back home you know I don't know it's just it doesn't make sense to me either it was just a sad case where he wandered off and unfortunately somebody kidnapped him and it just kind of went south there's also a possibility that Stephen could have been once again like kidnapped for a ransom like you remember what I was saying before how Damons were getting ransom notes about basically money in exchange for Stephen that possibly could have been a case um I did read where actually I don't know I can't remember it was a case a disappearance actually in that same area of a um, a little boy I think he was one month old at the time but they actually did end up catching who did it so apparently like the guy he kidnapped the baby because he was in trouble and needed money so he kidnapped him and was hoping like the parents would give him money but apparently the case ended up becoming bigger than it what it was and he got scared and he ended up just abandoning abandoning this one month old and just like leaving them and somehow I don't know how they caught them but they caught them and unfortunately the child remains were found like I think in the bushes somewhere where he left them because he was scared of being caught so I don't know that when I read that it did get me thinking to like okay maybe that happened to Steven they did kidnap him to kind of like hope that they would get money and when they realized it was way more serious than they wanted it to be they kind of like backed out and just ended up either like killing them instead because y'all got to think I mean they it was 5,000 people looking for this boy so I don't understand how they think that it's gonna work anyway like you think you're gonna I don't know they're like they just like drop the money off and we'll drop the kid off I, I don't know but, but you would think that it would be other ways to make money besides kidnapping somebody's kids and then wanting money in exchange to get them back like what what the hell is wrong with people I swear <sighs> like but unfortunately y'all to this day the case is still unsolved we still do not know where Steven is, if even if he's alive or anything. And I, it's just, I mean, it's a really sad case. And it's just, you just don't really know. Unfortunately, Jerry did pass last year in September, I wanna say. Yeah, he wasn't even able to know what happened to his child. I feel like that's probably one of the worst feelings. It didn't give a lot of information on Marilyn or what happened to her after they divorced. I did find a obituary for Jerry. So like I say, it doesn't really show a lot about Marilyn or if she's even still alive, who knows. But what I do know is y'all, I don't know, I just hate. Mm. It's just one of them cases where you just, you just really don't know. It's just, you really had to be there. Cause I just feel like even if it was an accident and he just wandered off, I mean, it would be a body somewhere. Like, I feel like, I mean, no, like definitely it was, he was kidnapped. He was kidnapped or something happened to him and it was a cover up. I don't know. Now I'm thinking about it. it I don't know. How could it be the mom? I mean, she would have had to call the police pretty damn quickly in order to, for them to have that search that long and then to call it off around 6.30 the next day. So, I don't know. You just don't know. And unfortunately, we probably will never know. 
and it, and you just think like a, a missing person if they were kidnapped they don't even realize they're kidnapped so i mean i mean and he's what six like i say 68 uh, who knows 60 i don't know he's 60 something so he's spent all his life not even realizing who he actually was but yeah you guys so that's pretty much all for this story today I do want to take a sec to let you guys know to please make sure that you use my love, prayers, positivity to this family. Like I say, even though it happened in 1955, still, I mean, I don't, I really don't know if um, the daughter is still alive, but even so. But yeah, go ahead and comment down below. What are your thoughts and what do you think may have happened to Steven? Like, I really want to know y'all because I'm over here kind of like just racking my brain and like, what? okay like what 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 happened <laughs> but yeah so definitely comment below what you guys think and also comment down below any other cases that you may want me to do i already have like a couple of cases for next month lined up after this um halloween edition is over with but yeah so that's pretty much it once again please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and a comment because this will really help out the youtube algorithm and yeah that is all for this episode of natural hair and true crime i love you guys and i will see you in my next upload